Hi, today we're gonna to look at the Anchor extension that just came out for Docker Desktop. My name is Dan Luring, and I manage the open source engineering team at Anchor. And um, we're the team that's behind tools like Sifting Write that you may have heard of and started using recently. If you wanted to follow up for any reason or ask questions about this, you can find me on Twitter at Dan Luring. Anchor is a spectacular company that has been uh, working for years now in container security and container image analysis. So uh, today we have uh, a number of open source projects and commercial uh, products that all specialize at uh, cloud native security workflows, as well as supply chain security management. And we're really proud of leveraging all the experience we've built up in this space to deliver a really cool thing for the Docker desktop experience. So we're gonna look at that today. To kind of set this up, let's look at two things about container images that aren't always talked about. So container images are really convenient ways to uh, uh, wrap software, package it up and ship it, uh, and then ultimately deliver it to a runtime environment. And if you're using Docker, chances are you're using container images. Um, but there's two things that we need to look at here. One is that it's not always clear what software is installed inside of a container image. If you're building an app with Docker, um, you might know that uh, your app is inside a container image that you're building. And you might also know that uh, maybe you're building your image uh, with a from line in your Docker file, and so you have a base image involved, and you know that that base image has software that you depend on. But you might not know what else uh, is installed in that base image that you're not depending on, but is still there nonetheless. And it can really matter sometimes uh, the total footprint of software that's installed in these images, especially as you're depending on them, your customers are depending on them, other people in the world might be depending on your image and using your image as their base image to build more images. Um, it really starts to matter what kind of software is being accumulated in these Docker images. Um, sometimes there's software you don't want to be installed. Sometimes there's software you do want to be installed. Maybe you depend on curl or, or you use curl or something like that in one of the lines in your Docker file. And so it matters that curl has been installed ahead of time. So you could install it yourself, or you may be hoping that it's available in the base image um, so that you don't have to install it yourself. And so typically to know if something like curl is installed in a container image, you end up having to create a really short-lived container and shell around and see if you can run certain commands. But there's no great way historically to figure out what software is already in that image. And so that's a problem we're going to look at today. And then along with software uh, itself, there's uh, the fact that all software can have vulnerabilities. And it's really important to understand this because uh, without knowing it, you can set yourself up for some pretty nasty attacks, um, depending on how your software is used. And so it's really important to understand that where there's software, there can be software vulnerabilities. And fortunately, a lot of people have done a lot of great work publishing information about specific software packages and where they can be vulnerable, vulnerable and how those uh, vulnerabilities can be exploited. And so um, it's important to understand that if you're using container images, this applies to you too, and maybe in ways you weren't expecting. So the TLDR here is that image content matters. It's something that really should be thought about um, whenever possible, because it, it's uh, it's always present when you're using container images. That's a great setup here for what we're going to show you today. This is the Anchor extension for Docker Desktop. Here's what it looks like. Um, you can see right off the bat that we have a list of images uh, that are installed in Docker Desktop. But instead of speaking from the slide, I'd love to demo it for you. So here it is. This is the live view of this uh, Anchor extension that we have for Docker Desktop. What this is showing you is actually a list of all of the images that you've uh, tagged uh, either through building the image or pulling the image uh, from a registry, but brought somehow into your Docker desktop instance. This is showing you every single image that's tagged. Um, and so you can see a number of things about, about those images. You can see the name, the image ID, but also two columns that are really interesting here. We can see the number of packages that have been installed in that image, as well as the number of vulnerabilities that are installed in that image. And in fact, uh, we even break that down by severity level. So here, for example, I can see that I have five critical vulnerabilities, uh, 21 high severity vulnerabilities, and six medium severity vulnerabilities. So that's a really nice at a glance look at the traits that are uh, present for each image that I have here. If I were to um, pull new images uh, or, or build new images, those would automatically show up in this list. Anchor is always watching um, your entire set of images. One thing I want to point out too about this is that everything you're seeing here is entirely local. There's no data being sent to Anchor or to anyone else uh, about any of this analysis or the images that you have. Um, no data leaves your machine. This is entirely local analysis that we're talking about. Um, so let's dive into it to a, a few things here. 
if I actually click on this image, I'm taken to this view that's image specific and shows me a list of all the packages that are installed in this image. So here I can see the name of each package. I can see the version that's installed and I can see the type. Keep in mind that multiple types of software can be installed in a given container image. So you can have uh, Alpine software installed, you can have Debian software. Um, it just depends on what you're doing. So you might have, for example, uh, uh, if you have a maybe a Go app where you're, you're, you're shipping Go binaries, but your, your base image is an Alpine image. So you have maybe a number of Alpine packages installed, but you also have these Go binaries that themselves contain Go modules. Um, and so you might want to see that differentiation here in this list of software. Another good example is maybe you're uh, shipping a Node app. So you've built uh, an image using Node Latest. And so Node Latest happens to be built on Debian. So there are probably some Debian packages installed in your container image, but there are also NPM packages that are part of your app that you've installed. The other tab here is vulnerabilities. So I can see um, kind of an expanded view of what we saw summarized on the main view, I can see all of the individual vulnerabilities that have been matched up against software that's present in the container image. Um, so here again, we can see each vulnerability, um, the, the software package, the, the version of the software package that's installed. And also if there's a fix for that vulnerability, I can see the fixed version of that package where the vulnerability has been uh, remediated. Um, I see that we are automatically sorting by uh, severity level, most critical first. Um, in case that's of interest to me, I can also change the sorting on, on these columns. And the nice thing here is we can also, uh, if we're interested, we can click here to see um, data straight from the source of, of where this vulnerability was published. So I can see in this case information from the National Vulnerability Database or NVD. And I can see the analysis that's been uh, published here about this vulnerability. And so here, uh, I have a, a search box too. I can I can quickly filter down to see uh, just the software that I'm interested in, and the same thing applies to the packages view as well. So this is really nifty. This is uh, this is really nice for a few reasons. One is that it's really quick to answer any questions that I have about my images. Um, I don't have to manually scan for any of these images. The information's already ready for me. So um, what actually happens is when you start. Uh, uh, installing this extension, as soon as it's installed, it begins looking at the images that you have and analyzing any that don't have analyses already, which if you first install it would be all of them. And it's actually using SIFT and gripe under the hood uh, to drive these analyses. This is really great. I can also search this and I can answer some of the questions that might come to mind as I'm wondering about these images. So for example, maybe I'm uh, looking at uh, node latest and I'm curious, uh, I, I talked about curl earlier. Does node latest have curl installed? I can start typing C U R L. Oh, yep, curl is installed. And in fact, this version is installed. So now I don't have to actually start a container. I already have access to this information. So that's really nice. I can also see vulnerabilities that are present. And sure enough, curl is vulnerable in this version right now. Um, another example is maybe I'm looking at my own app. So I have my app latest here. Uh, and maybe I heard about this thing called log4j and I'm wondering, do I have log4j installed? Maybe I was working on the front end, but I'm packaging in a back end that's also present in the image. Anyway, I'm, I'm looking at the packages for my image now. Let me start typing log. Uh-oh, yep, log4j is uh, present here. In fact, it looks like some of the vulnerable versions are present especially. So I could even go to the vulnerabilities tab um, to see if I have that log4j vulnerability that everyone talked about. Uh, and if you are actually dealing with log4j, you're probably, uh, you probably have this vulnerability uh, CVE number memorized, <clears throat> 21, uh, 2021-44228. So um, again, really, really uh, high level view here that I can quickly uh, drill down into to see uh, what's actually going on with my container images. Um, so that's basically it. This is this is what we have shipped. Um, we're excited about this. We think it's really great to have this kind of this analysis readily available. Um, we think that's a big deal because we see the users of Docker Desktop as folks who are um, just trying to get things done with with Docker images, and they don't have a lot of time to do uh, a bunch of extra manual steps. And so it's really nice to have proactive scans like this available, so that if you do have a question about any of your images, you don't have very much work to do. All you have to do is come here to the Anchor extension, and the information's already ready for you. So with that, let's go back to the slides. Just to, to highlight the key benefits here of the extension, um, this allows a really easy shift left um, up for security. You can see uh, very pertinent security information without doing a whole bunch of extra steps. 
um, you have unlimited scans. There's other vulnerability scanners you'll find that uh, cap the number of scans that you can do or cap them until you log into a service or start paying for a service. Not so with the Inquire extension, you have as many scans as you want. The other thing that's unique here is that your data is never sent anywhere. There's no uh, scan that's happening on some remote server. Everything is local happening on your machine and there's no analytics about the scan results or anything like that, what images you're using that we're sending to anywhere, it's all local. And the other really nice thing here that differenti differentiates the Anchor extension is that it's automatic and proactive. So all the scans you're, you're seeing, uh, those were initiated without you having to do anything. And so um, that, that analysis was done using these high performance tools like Sift and Gripe and then persisted in the back end and so uh, of your local Docker de desktop. And so uh, as soon as you're ready to look at them, you can see the results. You don't have to do anything manually if you don't want to. Uh, here's a quote that says, I built my superhero career on seeing all the little details. That's where I use the anchor extension for Docker desktop. And you may think that this quote is unbelievable and I would not blame you, but it's here on this slide nonetheless. Thank you so much for letting me show you the Anchor extension. I hope you get a chance to use it soon. It's really great. Uh, we love using it, we love building it, and we're excited to work more on it. Thank you so much, bye.